right, so I've got all my lining pieces laid out. Again, I kind of just ignored the, <laughs> the um, layout suggestion that's on the pattern instruction booklet. I don't know why. I think I just figure it's just lining. But anyways, if you wanted to follow that, this is what you would do. Um, I mean, pretty much the same. Although they don't have a, their pocket. Remember I told you in the skirt video, was it? I can't remember which one now. Um, that I like to do two of the pocket pieces in the self fabric and two of the pocket pieces in the lining fabric. So I did have to make room for that. And I mean it only takes up like, well this is a lining scrap. So maybe half a yard, not even. Anyways, so... Here is my layout. <laughs> Feel free to use this one or whatever layout you want. No big deal. Kind of just put them where they fit. Okay, I have got my lining pieces all cut out, but before you start sewing them together, here is a great little trick for ensuring that your lining never, ever, ever shows on the outside of your garment on your neckline and your arm size if you're not making the sleeves. Um, we are going to, you know, understitch and stuff like that and that is great, but still not always foolproof. This way ensures that it will always be perfect. Um, on your neckline, so this one here, and then because we're doing the V-neck, this one here, as well as any arm seam, arm size seam. If Again, if you're not making the sleeved version. So you've got an arm side here and you've got an arm side here. And isn't that it? Or is this part of it? I'll have to look. I think this might be, well, let's do this. Yeah, so this is all one arm seam too. So on this guy here, on this little itty bitty piece here, your entire neckline here, your entire neckline here, and here. You are going to trim off one eighth of an inch off of your lining. And that is just so that whenever you sew the lining to the main fabric, the main fabric is going to be an eensy teensy bit wider than the lining is. So when you understitch it and get them all, um, put together, the um, main fabric will roll underneath and your seam, um, your seam, your seam line will um, be underneath the garment. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then just blindly follow me. I promise you, <laughs> this is awesome. This is a great trick. It's one of my favorites that I've ever learned um, and I do it every single time. So trim off an eighth of an inch from your arm side an eighth of an inch from your front neckline, your back neckline, and the back arm side as well. Okay, probably not the best idea to use white lining on a white table, but you guys can see there, if I get my shadow out of the way, there we go, where I cut away um, one eighth of an inch from um, all of the arm size and both necklines, front and back. Um, and so once you do that, you're left with, you know, still something resembling your original pattern pieces, but um, it will magically um, make sure that the lining never ever peeps out on the right side of our, um, of our garment whenever we're done sewing. So now you can go back to the, I guess the third week of this sew along and follow the instructions again for attaching the princess seam, um, attaching the front to the back at the shoulder and the sides, and then also attaching your, um, what are they called? Uh, midriffs. So you will have a lining resembling the exact kind of shape as your bodice. And that's where we'll meet up next. Okay, and here is our completed lining placed on top of our bodice, right sides together. Now, you can certainly follow the instructions for how they recommend you do it. In fact, if you do it that way, then you wouldn't have attached the um, midriff yet, and you also would not have attached the side seam. So depending on where you are in the construction process, um, you might 
like need to go follow what I'm doing next. Um, but if you haven't started sewing yet, then you can certainly follow the instructions. I just didn't know that a sew along that followed the instructions exactly would be that helpful since a lot of you, you know, have sewn before and have probably made some sort of lined garment. Um, but if you haven't, follow these instructions, no big deal. I'm going to show you an alternative method to attaching the lining to the bodice. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't really give one better result than the other. It's just options. And don't we all just love options? Um, okay, so the first step is going to be attaching the neckline. So you're going to sew all along this neckline, coming to the point here, pivoting, and then sewing back up around this way, and then under stitching. Okay, my bodice and lining are attached, and then I trimmed the seam using pinking shears. We have so many lovely curves on the front of this bodice and along the neckline. Um, I like to use pinking shears just because it gives the seam allowance a little bit more movement um, whenever you have all of those curves. So in order to understitch, if you're not familiar with what understitching is, basically you're gonna pull the lining and the bodice apart from each other, and all you're doing is sewing the seam allowance to the lining. And that's going to ensure that whenever you fold this over, that all of that stays on the wrong side of the garment and doesn't try and roll up where you can see it whenever you're wearing it. So again, we've trimmed this, the um, lining in certain parts to also prevent that from happening, but this is another um, technique that will just make doubly sure that that doesn't happen. So you're gonna do that all around um, this neckline the same seam that you just sewed to sew them together, you're gonna to do that again, just sewing the seam allowance over onto the lining. Okay, my neckline is all done, and I'm going to tell you to resist the urge to press, the, to press this seam, because if you remember whenever we trimmed the seam allowance, you can kind of, the lining, when we trimmed the seam allowance of the neckline of the lining, um, you can kind of see the fruits of that labor. Now, um, if you pull your um, lining all the way to the to meet the, to match the raw edges of the shoulder, um, then you can see that what's happening is the that seam that seam is being pulled to the underside, which is just beautiful from the outside. So try not to press this now because that will only hinder sort of the magic of this pulling. Um, we will press it obviously, but um, not in this step. Okay, now to attach our arm side to get a beautiful clean line there. Um, that one's going to be a little bit more complicated, but basically all you're going to do is take your raw edges of the of the main fashion fabric and your lining, and you're going to turn them in, like along what would be the seam line. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you're turning them under like so to mimic, you know, not exactly, but what a seam would be. And then you're going to reach your other hand, which I don't have access to because I am filming, um, up underneath the lining, or up underneath the bodice in between the main fabric and the lining, and you're trying to grab those two seam allowances. Okay, so I have done that off camera. I've got my hands in, in between the lining and the fashion fabric, and I am pinching those two seam allowances. And then when you turn it, you will have right sides together your arm side. And it's a little funky. Um, it's kind of like folded in on itself in certain places. So this isn't going to be one of those like super smooth, um, easy to do seams like the neckline was. You're going to have to go little by little, um, maybe even inch by inch, um, but you will eventually get around the entire arm side. Um, and let me show you what that looks like. Okay, there we have it. The lining is all attached 
to the um, fashion fabric. Um, and you can see really well now. Look how beautiful that's going to be. I love it. Um, it's such a great little easy technique that doesn't take any time trimming the that lining early on. Um, that just creates such a beautiful finish on all of your lined garments. Never again will you have that lining peeking out. Um, okay, so now that you've done all that finicky work, and by the way, I did end up doing it in parts. So I end up doing like probably this entire lower arm side, like maybe between both of the notches was one stitch. And then I did one from here to the shoulder and from here to the shoulder. Because what you're essentially doing is pulling the fabric through the shoulder um, to get it to either side. So it does help to do it in three parts um, or even four if that is easier for you. But, um, but yeah, so now you're going to want to go back in there and you are going to want to treat, uh, trim your seam allowance and clip curves. If you're confident enough to use your pinking shears in there, again, you're going to be going inch by inch um, and you do not want to snip into your fabric, um, feel free to use pinking shears. Otherwise, trim with regular scissors and then just cut notches to but not through the seam allowance. And then you're going to understitch as far as you can. So you can probably only understitch. I usually get... I don't know, three or so inches away from the shoulder seam all the way around and then three or four inches from the top of the shoulder seam. That's about all I can ever do. Um, but because we trimmed the lining, um, the understitching is really just like an extra precaution at this point and not super, super necessary. Um, but I do like to do it because every little bit helps. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's all done. And then you get to do it all again for the other side. Yay! <laughs> all right, and there you have it. Once you get your um, lining attached on both arm sides and then turned right side out and pressed, this is sort of what you end up with. This is, of course, wrong side out. I wanted to show what, it, what the lining actually looked like. And you should be seeing some of your main fabric peeking through along those edges that we trimmed off the lining. The whole point of doing that was so that it would pull some of the um, self fabric to the wrong side so that whenever you're wearing it, right side out, obviously, um, that part will never show. So you can see on your arm side, I mean, you're never gonna see lining. That's just all there is to it. That's the beauty of that little trick. It's one of my favorites and I do it with every single lined garment um, that has like a uh, an outer edge. So that should do it for the lining for views A and B. And now I am going to walk you through the lining for views C and D. Similar tips, similar tricks, just different construction method. All right, so if you are making views C and D, C or D, <laughs> um, then your lining process is similar but different. Um, on this pattern, I trimmed this seam line, this seam line, both front arm size, both back arm size, and the back neckline. Those are the ones that I trimmed away the little like one eighth of an inch, one sixteenth of an inch, whatever it is. Um, those are all my pretty confetti trimmings. So you've got those ready to assemble. You make um, the pleats the same way you do for the um, bodice, the outer bodice and your self fabric. Same thing with the dart here. Um, then you also have your waistbands, one cut on the fold, one not cut on the fold. Um, and then I've got my pocket made out of the lining as well. So you are going to assemble your lining um, for the <laughs> bodice, you're not going to attach the midriff just yet. So put that aside, put your pocket piece aside, and just assemble the bodice pieces the same way that we did for the outer fabric.
All right, so since I am making the sleeveless version, which is technically bodice D with like, I don't know, C skirt or whatever the short skirt is, um, the sleeveless version has different directions than the sleeved version. So just make sure you're following along with the right version. That'll be helpful. Um, but basically sleeveless version is you take your entire left side and your entire right side and treat them as two separate pieces, which is kind of interesting. Um, so you just put the lining and the main fabric right sides together. You stitch, trim, and understitch the neckline and then stitch, trim, and understitch the neck, uh, the arm side. And then, so I've already done that for this side. And then you turn, you pull the one side through the other. So there'll be like a big sausage casing. And you end up with something like this once it gets all pressed. And I just want to show you guys again because really, the lining and my little tip about trimming it just turns out so beautiful every single time. I'm always so impressed. Um, but either way, once you get to this step and you've got your arm side pressed really nicely and your neckline pressed really nicely, then you're going to, oh gosh, here's another example. Am I going to be able to do this with one hand? Yes. You're going to pull up your main fabric separate from your lining. Okay, this is where it's falling apart can't do this part with one hand. So you pull, you separate your lining fabric from your main fabric and you stitch all along this one line here. And then when it folds back, now you've got a perfect side seam as well. So that's where you are going to land with the bodice. Do that to both sides. And I'll show you what we have whenever I'm done with all of that. All right, so we have our entire um, bodice assembled. Um, when I left you last, we were doing the side seams. And so after that, <clears throat> after you get it pressed all nicely, you just overlap the two pieces, match up the notches, and voila, you have your um, upper bodice. And so now we will be attaching the midriff. Okay, so remember, same thing, um, pretty much very similar to um, view A and B, except that we're doing the midriff in two pieces. So I don't have the lining attached. We are going to sew this right sides together to the bodice, like so, matching up all your notches and everything, pressing that down, and then flipping it over and attaching the lining like a little sandwich um, with the bodice in between. Um, I think it goes this way. So essentially this is what you're doing. You're making a sandwich with lining midriff, bodice, and then main fabric midriff. And then you're gonna press all of that down and then you'll have a completed, fully lined bodice. So exciting. All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of this done um, and I'll show you what your bodice should look like at the end of this portion of the sew along. All right, here she is, your completed bodice, fully lined, looking gorgeous. Um, probably should have basted this closed. Um, just to prepare for adding the skirt. Um, you can go ahead and do that. And then you can also go ahead and finish this with your serger or a zigzag stitch or folding it over or however you plan on finishing your seams in this garment. Um, but yeah, she is looking good and we are ready to assemble the whole thing and do our finishing touches. So next week, we are gonna be finishing her up. We are gonna be attaching the skirt, attaching the zipper, hemming. We're gonna be doing all of those things that we have been kind of building up toward. It's, I think next week is, yeah, the penultimate video in the series. Um, so yeah, 
we'll have all the finishing details and get her completely sewn up next week in preparation for the big reveal. Um, hope you guys are loving your bodices and loving your skirts and we'll be putting them together very soon. So until then, be sure to head over to the um, Royal Wedding Sew Along Facebook group um, where you can post your progress, ask questions, all of that jazz. If you are posting videos elsewhere on the internet, be sure to use the hashtag Royal Wedding Sew Along. Um, so yeah, until next week, thanks for watching. Bye!